Okay, so now let's look at some past questions to see how to apply some of the concepts that we've learned. In this first question, we are told that marks scored by some children in an arithmetic test are 5, 3, all the way up to 8. The arithmetic mean of the marks is what? So we are told to find the arithmetic mean. Now we know that the formula for finding our arithmetic mean is given as the summation of the numbers over the total number of numbers there are. So now we have to add all these number of so this is going to be a very long process. So we have 5 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 6 plus 2 plus 7 plus 8 plus 4 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 6 plus 9 plus 0 plus 8. Then we divide all these numbers by the total numbers there are. So how many numbers do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We have 20 numbers. So our mean will be equals to when we sum up all these numbers as the numerator, we get 100 and we divide by 20 and that is equals to 5. So the mean of our distribution is 5 and that makes B the correct answer. In this second question, we are told that if the mean of 5 consecutive integers is 30, find the largest of the numbers. So what do we mean by consecutive no numbers or consecutive integers? Consecutive integers are integers, integers that follow each other in which the difference between them is just one. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, they are consecutive integers, they are 5 consecutive integers. Similarly, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are five consecutive integers. As you can see, the difference between them is just one. And they in equation order, that, that is what makes them consecutive integers. So now I thought that if we have five consecutive integers, that the arithmetic mean is 30. So we're not told to find the largest of those numbers. So how do we go about that? So there's something that I want you to observe. Let's consider these consecutive integers 1 to 5. So if we try to find the mean of 5 consecutive integers like this, what do we do? We sum up all these numbers together. And when we sum them up, what do we get? We get 15. And there are 5 numbers. So what does the mean give us? The mean is equal to 3. Now, if you look at the mean over here, we have what? We have 3 here. And this 3 represents the middle number. So when you have consecutive integers, the mean is the same thing as the mean middle number. Similarly, if you consider these five consecutive integers, the mean of this number is going to be the middle number, which is what, 12. So now we know that the middle number is going to be the mean. That means the middle number is going to be 30, since they are consecutive integers. So the middle number is going to be 30. So I can write out two numbers before it and two integers after it. So 30 next number will be 31 and the next number will be 32. Now 30, the previous number will be 29 and the previous number will be 28. Now if we try to find the mean of 28, 29, 30, 31 and 32, you find out that the mean is what 30. So now what is the greatest of these consecutive integers? Can see that the greatest number here is what? Greatest number is 32. So the answer to our question is 32 and that makes C the correct option. In this next question, we are told to find the mean of this set of data. T, 2T minus 1, T minus 2, 2T minus 1, 40, and 2T plus 2. This is pretty straightforward. We know that our mean is given as a summation of the values over A. So to find the summation of the value now, we have to sum up this data. So the first one is what? T plus, then the second one is what? 2T minus 1 then plus t minus 2, then plus 2t minus 1, then plus 40, and plus 2t plus 2. Then all over, how many numbers do we have over there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 numbers. So I mean now, because when I collect the like terms, 
T plus 2T plus T plus 2T plus 4T plus 2T gives me 12T. And minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 plus 2 gives me minus 2 over 6. So this is the same as writing 12T over 6 minus 2 over 6. And that will be equal to what? 2T minus 1 over 3. So the mean of this distribution is what? 2T minus 1 over 3. And that makes D the correct option. In the next question, we are told to find the median of this distribution over here. So to find the median, the first thing we have to do is to arrange this number either ascending or descending. I'm going to arrange it in ascending order. So our first number is 0. We have two zeros, so I write them out, 0, 0. Then I have two ones. I write them out, 1 and 1. Then I have just 1, 2, so I write that out, 2. And I have 4, fours, so I write that out, 1, 2, 3, 4. And to make sure that I have not omitted any number, I count them to see if they are the same number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I know that I have not omitted any number. So now I can find the median. Now I know that the median or the total number that we have here is odd. So I know I'm just going to have one single value as the median. And that single value is given as what? n plus 1 over 2. And n in this case is what? So I have 9 plus 1 over 2. And that is equals to 10 over 2 which is equals to fifth. So the fifth number is going to be the median. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth number over here, which is two. So the median is two. Another way to go about it is that I can count it manually to see where the median number will fall in. So here I have one, I come here, I have one. Here I have another one, I have here. Then here also, here also, here also, here also. So I can see that both of them coincide at this middle point over here so it means that 2 is my medium which is my middle number so the correct option to this question is option T 2 in this next question we are told to calculate the median age of the frequency distribution in the table below so now as I've explained before when we have our distribution in the table what we have to do is to find the median based on the frequency distribution so now, the first thing we want to do is to find the sum of the frequencies. So if I find the sum of the frequencies, I have 3 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5. And that gives me what? 17. So the sum of all these frequencies is 17. So I know that there are going to be 17 data in my distribution. Now that there are 17 data, I know that I'm going to have just one, just one middle number. And that one middle number the position of that middle number is given as what? n plus 1 over 2 since I'm dealing with odd numbers. So what would that be? That would be 17 plus 1 over 2 and that is 18 over 2 and that is equals to 9. So the ninth number in this distribution is going to be my median age. So I try to look for where 9 falls in. So here represent 1 to 3. So when I come here, I have 5. So 3 plus 5 gives me 8. So from here to here represents 1 to 8. Then when I come here, 8 plus 1 gives me 9. So here, my ninth data fall underneath this table over here or this colon over here. And what is the value that corresponds to this value over here? The age that corresponds to where my ninth value falls is 30. And what option is 30? Option D. So another way to go about this is to try to list this out normally as you normally do. For example, you can list 20 out three times since the frequency of 20 is 3. So I have 20, 20, 20. 25, I write it out five times. 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. 30, I write it just once. 35, just once. 40, twice. And 45, I write it out five times. 45, 45, 45, 45, 45. So to find the middle number, I start from the top and bottom similarly. So this and this, then I go this and this, then this and this, this and this, then this and this, 
this and this this and this this and this then both of them now fall here so where they coincide is at this number 30 and that means 30 is the median age but as you can see this is a very long process that is why it's faster to make use of the formula which we easily figured out to be 13. In this question, we are told that the mean of seven numbers is 10. If six of the numbers are 2, 4, 8, 14, 16, and 18, find the mode. So before we can find the mode of the numbers, we have to figure out what the seventh number is. So to figure out the seventh number, we know that the mean, which is summation x over l, we are told that the mean is equal to what, 10. But we don't know what those numbers are. So we we'll say let the seventh number let the seventh number be x. So we have represented it by x. So now to find the main, we know that we have to sum all the numbers together, and we know what six of the numbers are plus our seventh number, which is x. So our mean now will be equal to what our seven numbers will be two plus four plus eight plus fourteen plus 16 plus 18 then plus our seventh number which we've denoted as x then over all together we have seven numbers is equals to our mean value is 10. so when we sum up all these numbers together we get what we get 62 plus x and when we cross multiply 7 times 10 gives us 70. so the value of x is 70 minus 62 and that is equals to 8 so i know that the seventh number is 8 so now the seventh num the seven numbers now the seven numbers are what are they they are what 2 4 8 14 16 18 and our seventh number which is also which we have found to be 8 so what is the mode the mode means the number that has the highest frequency or the number that appeared most. So based on what we have here, the number that appeared most is what? 8 and it appeared 2 times while the other numbers appeared just once. So our mode in this case is 8 and that makes the correct option, option D. In this question, we are told that the table above shows the scores of a group of students in a physics test. If the mode is M and the number of students who scored Four or more is n. What is m comma n? So we have to find two values. The first value that we have to find is the value of n, which is the number of students that scored four and above. So where does the score of four lies here? So we see that the score, of, so the number that scored, so n now, which represents the number that scored four and above. We represent students that scored four, five, six, seven, and eight. So how many students scored four? 12 of them scored 4, how many of them scored 5, 10 of them scored 5, how many of them scored 6, 6 of them scored 6, how many of them scored 7, 4 of them scored 7, and how many of them scored 8, 1 of them scored 8. So when you sum all these numbers together, you get 33, which is our value of n. Now our value of m is what? The mode of the distribution. And what is the mode? As we've explained, the mode is the value that have the highest frequency. So where does where is the highest frequency over here? We can see that the highest frequency here is 12. 12 is the greatest number. And which score have the highest frequency? The score that the highest frequency is what 4. So 4 is our mode in this case. So the value, what is m comma n now? So n comma m will be equal to what? What is our value of m? n our n is 33 and our n is m is 4 so that makes option a the correct option now i want you to take a look at option c where you have 33 comma 12. 33 is correct but this 12 here represented the frequency that we got so this explains what i was talking about before the mode is not the highest frequency it is the number that has the highest frequency so you should take note of that and the number that has this highest frequency as you can see is 4 so 4 is the mode and not 12 so that makes a our correct the correct answer so in this question now we are told to find the cumulative frequency for 5 less than equals to 8 x less than equals to 12 from the distribution above 
So this distribution over here, even though I've not talked about it or I didn't mention it, is what we call a frequency polygon. And what a frequency polygon does is it just plots the frequency, the data and the frequency together. So what this means in essence is if I want to try to read out the data, so what I have here is like the numbers now and the frequency. So my first data here is one. So for my X value of one, it appeared what two times. So my one value appeared two times. Then the value of two appeared four times. Now what about the value of eight? When I choose it up, for instance, the value of eight appeared what eight times if I choose it like this. So now I'm told to find the cumulative frequency from five to 12. So I need to figure out what the frequencies are from values ranging from five to values ranging equals to 12. I remember there is an equal, so that is why I'm considering five and 12, they're inclusive. So now the value of five, how many times does it appear? So this is where my five lies in my x axis. I chase it up to the curve. And where does it cut it? I chase it to my frequency axis and I get 10. So the value of five appears 10 times. What about the value of six? Value of six appears 12 times. The value of seven here yeah, appears 10 times. The value of eight appears eight times. The value of nine appears six times. The value of 10 appears eight times. The value of 11 appears 10 times. And finally, the value of 12 appears eight times. So as we've talked about, the cumulative frequency just means the summation of the frequencies. So if I sum all the frequencies together or add them together, their sum is going to be equal to 72. So the cumulative frequency from x is equals to 5 to x equals to 12 is 72. And that makes B the correct option. So this is going to be the last question that we're going to be looking at. And it says that the cumulative frequency curve above shows the distribution of the score of 50 students in an examination. Find the 36th percentile score. I should apologize for this diagram that is not clear, but it should not hinder us from trying to tackle this question. So now we know that there are 50 students, so our frequency is what 50 or n is 50, and now we like. So now to find the cumulative frequency that coincides with the 36 percentile, remember a formula that has what p over 100 into bracket n plus 1, where n is the frequency. So the position will be my percentile in this case is what 36 over 100 into bracket my n is 50 plus 1. That will be 36 over 100 times 51, and that is equals to 18.36. So the 36 percentile light in cumulative frequency of 18.36. So I look for where 18.36 lies in my cumulative frequency axis. And that is somewhere around here. Then I change it to the curve. And where it cuts the curve, or where it touches the curve, I change it down. And I read out that value. So based on it, I can see that that value lies between 20 and 30. But it's closer to 20 than to, it's closer to 30 than to 20. So this value is somewhere around 28. So I can say that the 36 percentile the score that coincides with it is equal to what 28. So since the score or the mark is in percentage, I can write it as well 28%. So if you scored 28% in the test, it means that what you scored more than 38% of the people that took the test. So the correct option is option B, which corresponds to 28%. So that pretty much sums up our discussion on measure of location. And I'll suggest that I go through the exercises now to see if you can tap cool the questions that have been there. And if you encounter any difficulty, try to make use of the forum so that I can connect with other students. Also, try to go through your past questions so that I can get additional questions to hone your skills. So that'll be all for now. Bye.